Hello, this is Danny from CG Dreams. In this quick tutorial to answer a question found on Cinema 4D CAF, it was about how you can control multiple morphs with one single controller or slider. I thought I'd take it back to this particular stage so that we can see how this is built and it's a rather simple way of controlling multiple morphs. So we've got three objects and I want to create three different morphs. So I'm going to go through the procedure of creating the morphs as well just for the case that um, a new user may be wondering how you do this. So you can skip ahead if you want to get to the Espresso part. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a morph for these objects. So I'm going to select all of them. And I'm going to right click. And in R21 they can be found in a slightly different place. I believe they're in um, rigging or something like that, there we go this creates multiple morphs, it allows you to control them all at once in this particular case just to set things up and I want to select two points and then from here we're going to select them individually so for the capsule I'm just going to do something which is just very simple but obvious for the torus, I'm going to do something very similar so we can clearly see that there's something happening with it and then the cylinder finally something very similar and we don't want that happening let's go for a scale ok select multiple tags for this we can uh, go to animate we can take these morphs down to zero because we're going to be controlling these with a separate controller so in order to set this separate controller up what I want to have is I want to have um, another object in my scene that I can select to control multiple objects so in this particular case I'm going to go for a good old null and then from the null let's just call this another name and we're going to go into user data add user data we're going to use the one that's already there and just change the name to morph in the interface I'm going to change this to float slider and you get a little demo just down here what it looks like so you can just try it out you can actually limit the slider between a particular range of percentage so this is where you would set the minimum and maximum values um, but we don't need to do none of that, we can keep things very simple here click OK now whenever you select that controller now you're going to see the user data and you're going to see the slider now it may be your preference to have the slider shown in the user interface in which case you can right click some reason in R21 it has a bit of a problem with Camtasia and when I right click on things it doesn't necessarily show right away but when you right click you can click on add to HUD and then you can move this to a better location with your control key I'm going to move it just to here and that does me fine I'm going to right click on this and display you've got all these settings in here what we want to do is we want to go to show and I'll click on always this is so that when I deselect my controller object it still remains in the scene so whenever we do this it's effectively the same as selecting that and doing that you can see they're matching just makes it a little bit more convenient so ne next thing is is to set up the Espresso now for those of you that are a bit concerned about using Espresso there is for this in particular a simpler way to get into Espresso 
and that is to use the, the driver and set driven. This is a way that it automatically creates um, a basic expresso I've set up for you and then you can go from there. And this is the way I'm going to do it. This is a way that you can do it as a U user to expresso to understand what's going on when you want to do something quite simple. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the controller and what I want to happen is, is I want this slider to be the driver. It's going to drive the, the control of something else. So what you can do is you can right click on this and if you go into animation sorry in exp expression and click on set driver so that part's done the next part is I just want to select just one of these morphs and you see here where it's got this morph here this, this is the strength of the morph what we want to do is we want to right click on this and we want to set this as the driven and Okay, and I've just got this little bit of a UI problem here when I right click. It doesn't always show. We go into expressions, driven absolute. You'll notice here now that you've got this little tiny change of icon. This just means you can't manually click on this to animate or to change this. This is basically telling you that it's now set up in Expresso. When you go on the object, in this particular case the capsule, you'll see here that we've got an Expresso tag. What we're going to do is we're going to drag this Expresso tag away from this. I'm going to put it on the controller. This, this means that we don't have to have multiple expressions um, by doing the same thing over and over again because we can edit this one and we can replicate what's happened with this single capsule. To show you what's happening with this, when I go to the controller or to the UI, when I move the slider you can see here that the morph has been applied. So we've made a connection between the user data as the driver and the morph strength as the driven indicated by this little tiny icon there. Now the way in which this works is uses a an expression tag called a range mapper and I'll just show you this. We're going to double click on the expression the expresso and you'll see three things in here. The controller is actually the null object because on the null object we've got the user data you're able to access this user data from within the Expresso of the object. The range mapper is a way in which we can um, set the range of an object to calculate the data input and output to different values or to the same values. Now to make this quite simple when we click on this range mapper you'll see in the properties some very basic settings in here and this is basically setting up what kind of data we're going to be dealing with. Now the one that we're really interested in here is the input range and output range. What type of data is it? Well we know that we're dealing with percentage. You can see here that our controller is still dealing with percentage between 0 and 100 percent. Therefore you can see that the range mapper is set to percentage. Now because we did it by right clicking on the controller and setting it as driver and then right clicking on the pose morph strength and set as driven, it's already done for us. But you can manually do this as well. And I'm going to show you how to manually do this. So what you would do is you would drag and drop the controller into Expresso. So this is the same as the part that we've got here. Because this controller has got user data on it, you're going to be able to access that user data when you click on this pink little tiny box here. Now, 
the colouring information is rather simple as you may already worked out. The pink is your output and the blue is your input. But because this controller is going to be outputting information only, we will click on the output. From here you've got all of the properties of what can be contained within this null. They're exactly the same properties that you can see when you click on here between all of this. So anything which is part of the object can be accessed from here. What we're interested in is right at the bottom here, user data. And then when you click on this, you should be able to see the user data that you've added. So I'm going to go to here again. And then we can select on morph. This has set it up exactly the same as the more automated way, but this is manually done. For the range mapper, we can find a range mapper or we can copy an existing one. We can simply just hold the control key and drag, and then it creates a replica of the previous one, including its settings. I'm going to delete that and I'm going to show you how you can find one. Let's make this a little bit bigger. We click on the magnifying glass, type, type in range and you'll see it in there. You can drag and drop this in here and there it is. In the range mapper you can see here that it's not set up like this one because this one was set up in the more automated approach but it's the same settings. We want to have the input range and the output range set to percentage. So I'm going to do that now. And that's all that needs to be set there. For the output range, we'll see two sets. Now, we got a set of parameters called input and we got a set of parameters called output. And all this is basically telling the, um, the range mapper is what is the range between these values? So anything regarding the input is basically what's coming in. So basically what's coming in is the data from the controller. We know that the controller has a percentage or a range between 0 and 100% as you can see in this controller. 0 and 100. So this is to do with the input see there so the input this lowest amount that we can put into an input is 0% and the highest amount we can put into that input is 100% so that is the same as saying the lowest amount of the input is 0 and the highest amount of the input is 100% now it can be the case when you've got um, different setups to control different things that you've got completely different ranges and this is why you've got this option in there. You may not want it to work that way. In fact, you may want it to work in reverse. Sometimes you want to um, drive a range of something up while simultaneously you're driving another range of something else down. So it creates this transition. So this is how you would do it. You would reverse the input, and well, you reverse the outputs. So for the output, we know that the output of the post morph again is starting at the smallest lowest value of zero and it's going to the highest value of 100 percent if it was the case that you wanted to reverse the order in other words when you're moving your slider up we, you want another slider to go down of something else you would reverse this and say we want to start the lowest range at 100 percent and we want to finish at the upper range of um, 0%. So that's how you would reverse it. So you see that in there. So we just need to connect them. So we just connect from morph to the input. The next thing is, is the morph that we want to control. 
To do this, we just simply drag and drop the morph in there. Now we've already controlled the capture one, so I'm going to drag and drop the torus morph into here. Okay. There's the torus morph. Now we just need to connect it, so we just go from here into the blue, which is the input, and it will show what's available for it. You see all of these properties. You go to Take Properties, and then it will expand open. And then in there, you'll see the morph. And the one we want is what's called Post Morph Strength. This is basically just being set up like for like the automated way. You see these parameters are exactly the same. Okay, and that's how it works. Now, we don't have to have multiple controllers in this particular case. We want to have one controller controlling multiple morphs. So, all we have to do is we get multiple morphs in here. We set our input to do exactly the same thing. We want post morph strength. And then we can go, because they're all sharing the same kind of output from 0 to 100%, we don't have to change anything. But if you had a morph which had a different range, you would use a, multi, a different range mapper. But we're going to use the same range mapper. We're going to go into the input of multiple morphs. And this simply means that when we move the slider of one controller, it's going to move this post morph strength of multiple morphs simultaneously. Again, if you had a different range that you wanted to have for a morph, you could simply just copy the morph by holding down the control key, drag in and drop in, and then you can go out into that here where it's got a different range. Let's say this was in reverse. like that. So we will disconnect this one for the moment. You just, draw, you just click on the little tiny wire, drag it away and it will disconnect. So this is set up to have a completely different range now. That one's set up to be in reverse to that one. Okay. Now, when we go to move this, See what's happening? When we've applied 100% of the morph, the left one here, that's our torus, and our capsule are having the morph applied, while the cylinder is actually not having no morph applied. This is because we added another range mapper in there to say, no, we want it to be in the opposite. Whenever I turn up to 100% of this controller, I want the morph for this to be turned off or have its value to zero strength. And when I take this controller down to zero, well, I want these two morphs to have zero strength, but I want this capture, or is it cylinder? This is the cylinder to have 100% strength. And this is all because I put an additional range mapper in there with the output and the lower, the lower output and the upper output in the reverse way. But I want, I want all of the morphs to work in the same way. So I'm going to ditch this setup. I'm going to ditch this setup here, I don't need it. I want them to all be applied at the same time. There we go. And now we've got all of the morphs applying exactly the same time. 